Welcome back to the beautiful Mediterranean island of Malta, where over the last few days, 30 giant men have thrown heavy barrels, lifted cars and towed 20-ton trucks. We've had our fair share of blood, sweat and tears, but now all that pain, all that screaming, all that effort counts for absolutely nothing. Our 10 finalists have to do it all over again. They currently stand at the foot of one of the toughest mountains in sport. It's the final of World's Strongest Man 2009. Two Englishmen have made it through to this final. From Dartford, the 30-stone giant Terry Holland, winner of Group 5 and a genuine contender. And from Stroud, Lawrence Shatley. He totally dominated Round 4. Will he now step up or will the occasion get to him? One thing is for sure, five times champion Marius Pujanowski will have a say in the destination of this title. The pole is arguably the greatest strongman of all time, but this will be one of the tightest finals we've ever had. Here, with all the action, your commentators Colin Bryce and Paul Dickinson. Thanks very much indeed, Martin. Well, there we have it. Fingal's fingers is the very first test of strength in this year's final. The rules are very simple. You've got a time limit of 75 seconds. You've got to put the five fingers over through 180 degrees. The heaviest of those is 320 kgs. Well, Lawrence Charlie has got some moral support in the shape of his wife and baby daughter. But the first Englishman we're going to see is Terry Hollands did so, so well to qualify for this final, dominated his heat. He's up against a giant of a man, Brian Shaw from the USA, a Colorado man, absolutely huge. So this is going to be a good start for Terry. There goes the lightest of them. And Colin, he's got a good chance. He came through his heat very strongly. I don't think we can judge how good Terry is comparing him to Brian in the fingers. Brian could well win this, in fact, very likely to win this event. So if Hollands can hang close, then it'll be good points in this event. Well, Terry Hollands, he's playing catch up at the moment. Brian Shaw has gone off like the proverbial rocket. And here goes the last of the Fingles fingers. That is huge. But Brian Shaw, one of the pre-event favorites, a great, great time for him. And Terry Holland's just struggling a wee bit, but he does finish. A shake of the head, it was wobbling all over the place. But there we have the leader, 32.37 for the five Fingles fingers for Brian Shaw. Terry Holland's 43.07, still wondering what went wrong. Well, Shaw just cruised through those. He could have done a sixth one, I'm sure. Holland's, though. I think he's suggesting that the finger was moving a little. Caused him problems anyway. Terry, well done for getting all five there, but you did seem to struggle on the last finger. What was going through your head? Well, I mean, basically, as I was doing it, it was moving side to side, and um, obviously, I want to be pushing it in a straight line. Mm. When it slide, the, the platform sliding, it makes it like a hundred times harder. So, um, I don't know, maybe it's a slight bit of bad technique from me, or just that the equipment's slipping on the surface. I don't know, but. Um, yeah, not very happy with that, to be honest. Well, not too happy at all. Dave Ostland, he went five fingers, 32.08. So cracking time for the American just ahead of his teammate and Travis Ortmeyer of the USA in third place. Representing Lithuania, Zadruna Savikas. One of the favourites for the title, Zadruna Savikas. One of the most experienced, too, alongside a former world's strongest man, Phil Fister, and the Americans occupying places one, two, and three at the moment. They could get the top four if Fister produces something out of the top draw here. Away we go. Well, if you remember back to heat two, Zavikas won that heat ahead of Brian Shaw, and he won this event two ahead of Brian Shaw, so we know he's good at it. Some people think Zavikas isn't an athlete, he's just a a heavily built static power man, but he can move Zavikas and he's well ahead of Fister here. And Fister used to have the world record in this event. Well, Zavikas is going like a train, it's a fast time as well. That was superb. 
Zavikas, 28.69. And the former world's strongest man, Phil Fister, really struggling over the latter half of the course. 37.57. Big Phil will be gutted with that time. What a time by Zavikas. It's just been announced. A new world record in the Fingal's fingers. Is Pfister the same force he was three years ago when he won the Worlds? I'm not so sure he is. But Zavikas, a world record. What a way to start. Not just the current world's strongest man, but a man who's won more titles in this competition than anybody in history. Derek Poundstone, second last year, eager for revenge. What a matchup we've got here. Well, Pujanovsky didn't get away too well in his heats. Had a series of second places, but he really means business now. This is the final. This is where the big man comes alive. Well, neither Pudzianowski or Poundstone are particularly good at this event compared to the absolute world's best. Neither man much over six foot, and that is a bit of a hindrance in this. Well, this is bad news for Terry Hollands. Both of these guys making rapid progress. And before these final pairings went, Terry was down in sixth place. And look at this, Poundstone getting it over. That is good. That is very good indeed from the American. And Pujanovsky there really battled after a terrific start. But he finishes in 36.47 for sixth place. The big man has made a slip up there. And Derek Poundstone, well, he flew down the course 35.38. But what a time it was set by Zavikas a few moments ago. He wins. Not just a world record, of course, but maximum points, too. What an amazing performance from Zidruna Zavikas, a world record time, confirming him as the principal challenger to Pujanovsky's crown. The pole could only manage sixth place in this toughest of finals. We're off and running in Malta. These nine men are going to provide the dominator with his sternest test ever. Welcome back to sunny Malta for the final of World's Strongest Man 2009. Here with details of the next event is Zoe Salmon. Thanks, Martin. Now, as you know, I love a good race, but this next one, I'd probably give a miss. It's the giant farmer's walk, and believe me, you'd have to genuinely consider yourself a giant to take part. One man who definitely fits that bill is Mr. Bill Kazmar, three times World's Strongest Man champion. Bill, what lies ahead for our finalists in this event? A really tough event. 160 kilos, 25 stones in each hand, down the course, 25 meters, set them down, spin the body, pick them back up with all their might, go as fast as they can. Some will drop, some will be pretty quick. A brutal event. Sounds tough now, Bill. We've already seen a lot of drama in our first event with Savika setting a new world record. Any predictions for this event? Ah, uh, of course my favorite, Poundstone the American. Okay, well let's see if Bill's predictions are correct. One of the world's all-time greats calling this a brutal event. 75 seconds, the time limit, the course is 50 metres and 160 kilograms in each hand. Louis-Philippe Jean, who's done so well to reach this World's Strongest Man final. Laurent Charlet absolutely dominated his heat. Totally psyched up for this one. And Travis Altmaier from Cyprus in Texas, the Texas Stone Man. Alongside the former champion, Phil Fister, who had a disappointing start. And the fighting face of Marius Bujanovsky, the all-time great of World's Strongest Man. Well, this is the equivalent of carrying a small motorcycle in each arm. That is phenomenal. And it's Pujanovsky who gets away to a cracking start. Pujanovsky is absolutely flying, but the crucial point comes when they have to turn around. 
Louis Philippe Jean on the far side is going well too. But once again, it's Pujanovsky who gets away so, so well. The pole is flying. The master is coming home. What a finishing time for Marius Pujanovsky. 25.05. Colin, that was phenomenal. Incredible grip strength, but look who's coming in second. It's Charley ahead of Fister. And it's not lost on the Gloucester man. There is the Canadian champion finishing on the far side. And Travis Ortmeier really, really struggling here. He's had enough. Surely he can't get these over the line now. That was a brilliant start by Pujanovsky, but Lauren Charley, that could be big, big points. Every time you have to pick this up again, it's so hard on the lower back. Ortmeier looks like a beaten man already. But Pujanovsky, 25 seconds. I thought a winning time might be 35 here, Paul. That's phenomenal. Lauren Charley, though, currently in second place. If you can hang on to that, what a brilliant start it would be. And Phil Fister, he looked a little bit lethargic there, but he's still third faster so far. Louis-Philippe Jean, 50.45, really struggled. And Travis <laughs> Ortmeier, a big, big disappointment for the American. Well, look at Charlotte. I'm sure he was worried his grip was going. In fact, it was right at the end there. He was hanging on with his fingertips. How does it feel having 25 stone in each hand? That is heavy going. <laughs> How would you feel having 25 stone in each hand? It's, it really hurts your grip. Imagine that weight trying to rip open your hands. You see a lot of guys, they'll cut their hands open and things. It's a painful event, but one of my better events, so I'm happy. Good performance for me, that. Ladies and gentlemen, it was very the good. The next heat Dave now, Dave Osland of the United States. A Minnesota man, six feet seven inches tall. Terry Hollands once more. And he finished in eighth place after Fingal's Fingers. Very disappointed, must come back here. Derek Poundstone, the runner-up to Matthias Pujanovsky in the final in 2008. Zidrina Savikas has got to be one of the favourites to take this event. And a real dark horse is Brian Shaw. Always wears that mouth guard when he's taking part in strongman events. Marius Pujanovsky's time, 25.05. And Lauren Charlet's time, 33.54. Right in the middle, Zavikas gets away well. Well, it was Poundstone who was up first, but I think Hollands is in the lead here. Zavikas, though, coming back. This is going to be very close, Paul. Well, Hollands gets away. Poundstone is struggling. Zavikas coming on strong. Now, come on, Terry. Grit your teeth. Hollands is going well, but goes down. Poundstone coming through. Wow, what a finish. Poundstone finishes now. And Terry Hollands could finish in a moment. Zavikas finishes. Oh, my goodness. It all went wrong for Terry Hollands on the far side in the last couple of metres. But he's looking at his hands there. And how about Brian Shaw? He's meant to have one of the best grips in the world. He had real problems there. These are very thin handles. And oh, for big men, I think they're almost too thin. Look at Hollands, he's looking at his hands, looks like he's cut them up. That's not the way you want to start the World's Strongest Man finals. Well, we're still waiting for one man to cross the line, and I'm sure the inquest into that event will go on for some time. The American has finished. So the jury is out on whether Terry Hollands is going to score big points here. But Derek Poundstone comes through with a very good time to finish in second place. Sidrina Savikas just faded over the last 10 metres or so. 36.20 for him. Terry Holland, sixth place. He hasn't got off to a great start, has he? 37.13. And Brian Shaw, as Colin Bryce was saying, a big disappointment for the American, expected to do better. Dave Osler, well, I think we know what he thinks about it. Ninth place for the big Yank. I think if this race had been 10 or 15 metres shorter, Hollands would have done a whole lot better. His grip just giving away. Look at the pain on his face. 
That is Pudzianowski with 25 seconds. Well faster than anyone else who wins. Terry Holland's fingers absolutely wrecked after that event. Terry Holland's may be feeling the pain right now, but Maris Putinovsky will be mightily relieved after that performance. The big Englishman has to settle for sixth. The major surprise, Travis Ortmeier, comes in dead last. It's the big Z still leading the way, but Poundstone and Putinovsky are right on his shoulder. A fantastic result for Laurent Chalet moves him into sixth alongside 2006 champion Phil Pfister. Holland's slips to eighth. Well, as I expected, this is turning into one of the hardest four finals we've ever had, and things are about to get a lot more difficult for the athletes. As we move down here to the Malta International Airport for one of the classic strongman events. Any moment now, all ten of the athletes are going to have to pull one of those. So, a tremendous event in prospect for World's Strongest Man. We have pulled some big things over the years, but none comes any bigger than this. There's the time limit. Once more, 75 seconds. The course is 25 metres, and the plane weighs a whopping 44 tonnes. Well, Travis Ortmeier, lying in eighth place after two events, he's actually equal eighth at the moment. The American would have wanted to get off to a much, much smarter start. Ready. Don't worry, the plane's not going to take off. Unless, of course, Travis Altmaier really turns on the afterburners. But away he goes. He's going to find this hard, as is everybody, Colin. Well, I mean, it's just impossibly big, this. It's hard to imagine how a human can pull such a colossal object. But he's doing it. He's got it underway. And that's probably the most difficult part, getting it moving. Now he just has to keep the pressure on. Pull with those arms, drive for the line. And you know what? This is going to be a decent time. They thought it would be about 40 seconds, the winner. And I think that's what uh, Ortmeier is going to do here. Well, he's going to be close, that's for sure. The front wheels have got to go over the line. There we have it. Good time, Travis Ortmeier, 40.53. And the lungs at this point in time must be burning. The legs will be hurting, everything will hurt here. Good start, and he finished strongly. Well, that was an almost picture-perfect pull from Ortmar. The other guys really have a tough benchmark to chase now. Well, Brian Shaw really psyched up here, but as you can see from the lens on our camera, it is beginning to rain, and that will be a big disappointment to the remaining competitors. The grip is so, so important here, and this could have a major effect. OK, take the strain. Ready! Ready! Yes! Yeah. Well, Brian Shaw has got body weight on his side. We know he's the heaviest competitor in the entire contest. We saw that it said 385 pounds for body weight. I'm sure it's a lot higher than that, well over 400 pounds, Paul. He's a monstrous big man at six foot eight. And he has very strong legs as well. Good start. This is underway and it's moving quicker than Ortmeier had it moving. Well, he certainly has accelerated, that's for sure. He's got to go over the white line, but then the plane has to cross it too. He's going. He continues to motor. Those legs are working very, very well indeed. Watch the clock. Travis Ortmeier's time, 40.53. I do not believe it. That is exactly the same time to exactly one hundredth of a second, my goodness. Well, I guess the difference there was Shaw had to deal with the rain. Psychologically, he knows that it's going to be harder pulling in the rain. The shoes don't stick as much. So Brian Shaw probably did the better pull, but it's equal on time. Well, let's catch up with some other results. Travis Ortmeier and Brian Shaw lead with that outstanding time of 40.53. And look at Phil Fister down in fourth place. From Lithuania, Zedrunas Three athletes to go now. The first of them, Zedrunas Zavikas, the leader after two events. Okay, take the strain, Zedrunas. Well, you'd have heard Colin Bryce say earlier that body weight is a factor here. This guy is a giant. And just look at the size of those mighty arms as well. Just leaning against the plane to get it going. 
Now he's got momentum. Now the hard work begins. Well, you can hear him breathing, trying to keep oxygen into that massive body of his. After about 15 or 20 seconds, he's going to have the lactic acid kicking in. But he's got it moving now. He just has to keep the momentum going. This is going to be another time around 40 seconds, Paul. It's all very tight. Well, that plane wheel creeping nearer and nearer the line, and the clock is ticking away still. It's going to be close. So, so close. Oh, just under the leading time so far. And Zavikas has just been told 40.24. This event just keeps on getting better and better all the time. I wonder if anybody can break the 40-second barrier. Well, he did just about as much as he could there. This could well be the winning time, Paul. Well, Zadrina Savikas trying to hang on to his lead. But you'd never count against Marius Pudzianowski. And you know, Colin, when you think about all of the great strongmen in the past, whether they're Icelandic, Swedish, Norwegian, this guy has won more titles than anybody, and that definitely does make him one of the best ever. Oh, it's plain and simple. He's got five titles, more than anyone else ever, and probably in a much more competitive era as well. Listen to that guttural roar from Marius. How much does he want this? Well, the times have been so, so close so far. Growling, hurting, working through the pain. And Marius Pujanowski has got it all. He's got the physical equipment. He's certainly got the motivation. It's going to be close again. Watch the clock. Just over 40 seconds, dips under 41. My goodness, it's close again. Marius Pujanowski, 40.91. But that is only good enough for fourth place. Such is the standard that has been set. Well, what's the difference between him and Zavikis? It can't be more than two inches, three inches in the pulling power there. Amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, from Dartford, England, Terry Holland. What a moment for Terry Hollands. And the most important thing for him now is to finish and finish fast because tied for eighth place is not good enough. He was, of course, a finalist last year. Uses his immense body weight just to get this thing rolling. Down the runway, and Terry Hollands now has to really turn on the juice. Let's not forget, Paul, he was the best truck puller of all 30 athletes in their heats. Terry Hollands loves this event. He's got that perfect combination of body weight and colossal leg and arm power. He's a real athlete, Hollands. He really can shift. Well, if anybody wants to win this, they've got to get as close to 40 seconds as possible. And Hollands is sprinting away. It's going to be close. This is fast. It's victory for England. Terry Hollands does it. He's going to find out in a moment. He wants to know the time desperately. There it is. 38.19. Oh, words fail me. That was brilliant. Paul, he really needed this win. If he stands any chance of getting on the podium or winning this event, the comeback had to start now. Terry Hollands, the only man to break 40 seconds, proving that he definitely belongs in this exalted company. Five performances from Poundstone and Fister are only good enough for sixth and seventh place. Zavikas is pulling away. Can he finally win this title after finishing as runner-up on three occasions? Travis Ortmeier and Dave Ostland are not living up to their billings at the moment. Their hopes of a top five finish are fading fast. But Hollands has struck a blow here in Malta. Will it be enough to trouble the three favourites? Welcome back to the final of World's Strongest Man 2009 from the crystal clear coastline of Malta. We've had some fantastic action since you've been away in the overhead lift. Brian Shaw managed a very respectable six reps with this extremely awkward bar. His compatriot, Travis Altmaier, went one better. Reigning champion, Marius Pudzianowski, then up the ante. 
He tied for second place with Derek Poundstone. But once again, Zidruna Savikas takes maximum points. The Lithuanian is beginning to look untouchable as he edges out his two closest rivals. Canadian Louis-Philippe Jean can be very proud of his five reps, but the two Englishmen are at the bottom of the pile. Six and a half points is the gap at the top. Can anyone catch Savikas? Hollands has slipped to the bottom half, but he has some big names to keep him company down there. Here are Zoe and Bill Kazmaier with details of the next event. Yes, Martin, that's right. We're down here at the Blue Grotto for the boat pull. Our guys are going to have to pull this 300 kilogram boat up the 20 metre ramp in the fastest possible time. Now, bear in mind that it usually takes five normal sized guys to do the job. So this is really going to hurt our athletes. How on earth are they going to feel? What pain is going to be going through their bodies, Kaz? Zoe. Their legs are going to be blasted. Their upper back is going to pump quickly. The pain's going to move down into their lower back. Their arms are going to feel like stumps. And when their hands fatigue, the rope is their only lifeline. Sounds scary. Let's pull that boat. I love that description by Bill Kazmaier. There's the time limit, 75 seconds once more. The course is only 20 meters, but the boat weighing 300 kilograms will just feel heavier and heavier the higher it gets. Zidrina Savikas, the leader. He's been absolutely superb in this final so far. There are other competitors that have gone before. Travis Ortmeier leads the way, 45.88. Lauren Charley there, 51.13, down in fourth place. There's the course coming up on the runners. And Zidrina Savikas knows this event, but he's struggling at the beginning. You've got to get that rope moving quickly. You've got to use the legs and you must use the back as well. You know, there's two things against Zavikas here. Number one is he's actually got quite small hands for a giant guy. And this is a very thick rope. The other thing is very thick midriff, very thick midsection. And he's doing really very small pulls. When you watch an Olympic rower, they do colossal long pulls. He's going for it though, isn't he, Paul? He's giving absolutely everything into this. It really does beg a belief as to how a strong man can train for this event. But Zavikas keeps on. As Bill Kazmaier said, he's going to feel absolutely blasted at the end of this. You get the feeling that the taller men will benefit here because of the longer levers. And we've got Travis Ortmeier leading at the moment at 45 seconds, and Zavikas is way, way down on that time. Just over a minute for Zavikas, and that's really thrown Marius a lifeline. Look at his pulls, they weren't more than eight, 10 inches each time he went for the rope. He needs to practice this. From Poland, the five times world's strongest man. Marius I remember the time Marius won this event for the very first time, won the title. He was delighted. I wonder if even he dreamed he would go and win it a further four times. The all-time record holder for World's Strongest Man titles gets this underway. Now, is that talcum powder or is that short underneath his bottom? Will that make things easier for him? It absolutely is talcum powder. Marius has thought of everything. Ever the professional, he's realised the others are sticking on that wooden board and he's thrown a load of talc down and it's working, Paul. Look at the length of pull he gets. Look at the legs on that man. Well, he's just like a prime racehorse, isn't he? Bristling with muscle, as you were saying. And this is a very good time. It could be under 40 seconds. Yes, it is. Marius Pujanowski shows why he is the great champion. I didn't understand a word of that, but I bet it meant, yes, I am number one. 39.38, that is outrageous. And you know what, Paul, he didn't expend that much energy doing it. So Vickers has gone to the bank big time in that minute and two second pull. Marius, he's not even out of breath. Big Brian Shaw. 
Well, he's been saying for some time that this is the event for him. And, of course, being six foot eight, having the longest levers of anybody, he could be right. Away we go. Well, the time to beat, of course, was an outstanding one by Pujanovsky. 39-38. And this guy now going hand over hand. He's got quite an interesting technique, Colin, but it's effective. Well, everybody else got stuck on that first pull, Paul, not Brian Shaw, so we know he must be quicker off the start. And he's only five, six metres from the line. This is really quick. Well, he's not just going to win this event, he's going to blow everybody out of the water. Oh, my goodness. 32.44. That is almost seven seconds faster than Marius Pujanovsky. Well, if you're going to build a perfect athlete, to pull a boat arm over arm, you'd build Brian Shaw. Six foot eight, long levers, incredibly strong hands and massive hands. Hands like a bunch of bananas. He's not letting go of that rope, no chance. Colossal power. Brian, 32 seconds. Did nobody tell you this is going to be difficult? You can't be that surprised, though. You were very confident going into this event, weren't you? Yeah, this, is, this has always been a great event for me. You know, I... Uh... I knew that I could put up a good time, and it's just, honestly, at that, at that point in time, it's, the pressure was on me to step up, and that's what I did, so I'm happy. So you're in a good place right now? <laughs> I think so. I mean, I don't know what the points are after that, but definitely couldn't have hurt me, so we'll see what happens. What a performance from Big Brian Shaw, beating the reigning champion by almost seven seconds. Terry Holland can be proud of his efforts. Lawrence Charlet did well, but the big news is Zidrunas Savickas well down in eighth place. That means that the gap at the top has been cut to just half a point, and this competition is definitely back on. Brian Shaw's efforts move him into third. Terry Hollands is within striking distance of the top half. Next up is an event he enjoys. Here are Colin and Paul. Thanks very much indeed, Martin. That's what lies in wait for the strongmen. The deadlift and two cars there. This is the situation so far. Terry Hollands of England leads the way on eight repetitions. Ortmeier is there. Charlie has completed six lifts. He's lying in third place. But Brian Shaw, who did so, so well in that last event, he's moved up from fourth place into third and could challenge. Derek Poundstone is the man who's playing catch-up now. A Poundstone ideally equipped for this deadlift. Very simple Ready. mathematics. How many times can you lift the car? Away we go. And it's eight to beat Colin. In this event last year, it was lighter, but Poundstone managed to draw with Pujanovsky. They both did 10 reps. So we know Poundstone has a great deadlift. But Shaw, who knows? He's improved so much since last season. Well, how can you convert? from a successful basketball player into a successful strongman. If you want to know the answer to that, you ask this fella. Derek Poundstone, the rock-solid policeman, is going well. He's on eight lifts, needs one more to go into the lead. Can Shaw draw level? Shakes it up there. Shaw's got eight, but Poundstone has got nine. No more for Shaw. He's given his all, and Poundstone has as well, and he is in the lead. He wants to know how many. I can tell him it's nine. Ryan Shaw currently tied for second place. Still good points for the American. Well, Poundstone did what he had to do, take first place. It's heavier than last year, so I think nine reps it is very impressive. But Shaw, eight, he shouldn't be disappointed. That's a solid rep count. Zavikas still leads, still moving towards this title of the World's Strongest Man 2009. The man up against him this time, though, is the defending champion. So much pride at stake here. He's lying in second place. He's playing catch-up. You never know, Colin. It could all be on this event, let alone the event to come. This one is a crucial one. If Zavikas can finish in the lead after this one, the pressure goes back to Pujanovsky. Look at Pujanovsky again. The professional 
He's put baby oil all over his legs to help that bar slip up his thighs. Never misses a trick, Marius. But it's Zavikas who's just a fraction ahead here. I'll tell you what, for my money, Zavikas looks the stronger. He's ahead by one repetition. Closely being followed, though, by Pujanovsky. But Pujanovsky now beginning to burn calories, beginning to cramp up a little bit as well. And he's beginning to struggle. Well, Zavikis has equal Poundstone's total. One more, it'll be double figures and the win. That could be the repetition that gets him closer to the world title of world's strongest man. Pujanovsky has not finished, though. He gets nine. He draws level with Poundstone, and Zavikas has rubbed salt in the wounds. As far as everybody else is concerned, he's moved on to 11. Zavikas just making sure that Pujanovsky is not going to catch him, and I don't think there's any danger of that. The champion says no more. Zavikas is the winner. And that could be a crucial result for this year's competition. Marius is beaten again. You know, Paul, Marius could really have done with that last rep. Instead of second equal, he'd have been second on his own. Eight and a half points now. He has to share second place with Poundstone. And Zavikas goes a point and a half further into the lead. Three times a runner-up. How does it feel right now to be on the threshold of winning that title? I need to win this title because it was too much time second place in this competition. I must win. Exciting times entering into the last event. Good luck with it. Thank you. Thank you. Back to winning ways for Zidrunas Savikas. A share of second place for Pujanovsky might not be enough. Fister's chances of finishing in the top half look to be over after another poor performance. The lead is back to two, and the reigning champion will be looking over his shoulder at the young American. Terry Holland's hopes of a top five finish remain alive with one event to go. Five titles and arguably the greatest of all time, but is Zidrina Savikas about to take the Dominator's crown? So it all comes down to this. Yet again, the Atlas Stones will decide who will be the world's strongest man. This has been the finest lineup we've ever had. The weights have been heavier, the times have been faster, the competition has never been tighter. Theoretically, four men can still win this title, but realistically, it's a shootout between the big two. Zdrinas Savikas against the five times champion Maris Pudzianowski. These stones will fly. That is guaranteed. Zdrinas Savikas there has 49 points, a two point cushion over the defending champion. Brian Shaw's been a good competitor as well. He's currently lying in third place. Uh, Derek Poundstone, though, in fourth, he has got a mountain to climb. Came here with a massive reputation, hasn't quite lived up to it. Been very impressed with Brian Shaw. And if he does finish in third place, he will be delighted. There's who's gone before, Travis Altmaier leading the way, the stone man from Texas, 24.29. This is where it's at for World's Strongest Man 2009. Now these two guys have got to fly. Martin Bayfield said the stones will fly. We'll have to wait and see. Well, in theory, both these men can still win, but truly, this is the bronze medal fight right here, and Shaw's just in the lead ahead of Poundstone. I'll tell you what, Shaw is a name for the future. He may not win this competition this year, but he is a mighty, mighty man and finishes there. It's a good time. Poundstone smiles all over his face. But it's Brian Shaw who got the edge there. 25-62. That was class. And you know what, Paul? That now makes seven men having done five stones under 30 seconds. There is a very tight group of guys now. This makes Marius and Zavikas' battle even harder. One little slip up and you can easily lose five or six points. It's all come to this last act by Zavikas on the left and Pujanovsky. He can smell the title, he can feel the title. 
but is he going to win it ahead of this guy who's won it five times before? Oh, it's nerve tingling stuff here in Malta. Ready? This is it, Colin. The title every strong man wants to win. Marius isn't hanging around, Paul. He was much quicker on that first stone. Oh, a slight mistake there, though. And it's neck and neck once again. Well, Zavikas has got three. Pujanovsky has got three. Now Zavikas goes ahead. This last one for the title, surely. He is the world's strongest man. Wow, Pujanovsky has lost his title. Finishes in second place. He cannot believe it. Equally, Zidrina Savikas can hardly believe he will be crowned shortly as the world's strongest man. What a way to finish. Well, Paul, very sporting from Pujanovsky. Five times world's strongest man. Lifts the new champion's arm up. Zavikas, people have talked about him for years as potentially being the strongest man. Now he is in 2009. There's no doubt this year he is the champ. He is the man. For the next 12 months, nobody can take this title away from him. The stone man takes the win, Terry Hollands takes third, but sandwiched between them is the result that matters. Englishman Laurent Charlet is the only man not to lift all five stones, but all eyes are on our champion. Zidrinus, before this, you'd already won every single strongman competition title there was to win. You've already been runner-up on numerous occasions, and now you've just won World's Strongest Man 2009. How are you feeling? I am very happy. Finally, I won this competition. Two times was unlucky, was second. 2004 was very close to winning, but I was injured and now I come back after five years I am very happy to to win this great contest as anybody ever deserved it more what a comeback what a champion Pujanovsky finishes second Shaw takes third Holland misses out on a top five finish and Charlet avoids a wooden spoon in his first final so high drama right to the very end here in Malta, but ultimately it's the giant Lithuanian, the Big Z, who claims the top spot on the podium. Will he be back to defend his title? Will Marius Pujanovsky ever regain the crown? And will the UK athletes ever mount a challenge to rival that of the Americans? There's only one way to find out, that's to join us next year. Until then, though, goodbye and congratulations to Zidrunas Savikas, World's Strongest Man 2009. Muscles aren't available online, but you can get a little closer to your beefcake heroes by logging on to bravo.co.uk for a chance to win a World's Strongest Man bag of stuff. After the ads, though, it's leverage. <laughs>